Joining me now to break down the political saga is Caitlin Huey Burns from Real Clear Politics. Okay, Caitlin, he's heading right. over to Indiana. Yes. Big, um, important state. It's actually a state mm -hmm. he lost in 2012, mm -hmm. even though he won it in 08. Economy is hugely important in this state. Mm -hmm. Why is he also talking the campaign trail in this particular event? Right. Well, there's still an active Democratic primary going on. Hillary Clinton has not yet officially secured the Democratic nomination. And so, in that regard, she has to run two separate campaigns. One, she has to continue on in the primary while also trying to take on Donald Trump. And so, uh, President Obama is extremely popular among Democrats. He's a very active campaigner, a good campaigner for Democrats, as we've seen in past campaign cycles, including his own. And uh, Democrats want him to be more active on the campaign trail going against Donald Trump. We've started to see a preview of how the president will operate on the campaign trail. He's also thinking about his own legacy as a Democratic uh, sitting president and the legacy perhaps of his party and very much has an interest in having Clinton, uh, once she becomes the nominee, elected. Uh, where he's heading right now, Elkhart, it was really hit heavily by the mm -hmm. recession. I mean, mm -hmm. it was really tragic situation. They call this the RV capital of the world because this is where RVs are built. Talk to me now about where the politics lie. Can we tell, is it tilting towards Trump or Hillary Clinton? Hard to tell right now? Well, it's hard to tell right now what the general election matchup will look like in Indiana, but what we do know is that Trump did very well there in the primary. And as we know, after that primary, Ted Cruz left the race and John Kasich soon afterwards. So this has been, uh, this is a, as far as Republicans are concerned, it's a very conservative state. Um, the, the Republican governor there has faced backlash over religious freedom laws and that sort of thing. So there's also a, a more moderate business community interest. And of course, as you mentioned, President Obama did well there as a candidate in 2008, lost it in two, uh, 2012. So it is considered uh, still a battleground. We see Air Force One taking off right there, heading for Indiana. You were mentioning Governor Mike Pence of Indiana. He doesn't buy into what President Obama's expected to tout this afternoon, saying that mm -hmm. the White House really helped with this economic stimulus and getting people back their jobs. Mm -hmm. Governor Mike Pence is saying a different story. He's saying that's not the case. Mm -hmm. The economy is going to factor in huge part in this election. No? Right. The economy is top of mind traditionally in, in races and this time especially. National security, of course, plays a role, but increasingly and often traditionally we see the economy top of mind. And in a place like Indiana, I mean, this is kind of way, the way that Trump really made uh, his mark there, you know, really focusing on uh, the vanishing middle class, focusing on the working class and uh, voters who are, uh, who are told the economy is getting better, who are seeing signs on paper that the economy is getting better, but aren't necessarily feeling it in their own personal lives. So that's something that Republicans across the country are really uh, trying to tap into. And they want to prevent uh, Clinton from, um, you know, being able to tout um, any e economic developments because, of course, she is running on that same legacy. Speaking of Clinton, I want to look at a new Quinnipiac national poll out today. It shows both Clinton and Sanders leading Trump head-to-head -head matchups. But among the Democrats, it says Clinton is still the favorite. The numbers, it seems, I don't know if we have those up, but uh, 45 to 41, Clinton versus Trump, mm -hmm. and Sanders versus Trump, 48 to 39. What do you make of those numbers? Well, Sanders' lead, I think, at this point is a little bit larger in terms of the matchup with Donald Trump than Hillary Clinton's is because, uh, you know, I do expect once the Democratic nominee is, is officially decided, we'll see a coalescing of sorts by the party. We saw that on the Republican side, the, the margins narrowed. Um, and right now, you know, Hillary Clinton has, uh, she, she has struggled to win a few states, but she has been ahead in the delegate count. She's been ahead um, in the vote count. And uh, so as far as the popular vote is concerned, uh, she's been ahead. So it's not surprising yet to see uh, Democrats uh, supportive of her, although she will have a lot of convincing to do for those Sanders supporters. We were just looking at a split screen there with uh, Bernie Sanders. We're waiting him to speak in California, and then also Hillary Clinton uh, expected to speak in New Jersey with Bon Jovi. What sometimes people say there's all the beer factor when it comes to the president. Do you want to grab a beer with right. the next president of the United States? Likeability weighs into the race, doesn't it? It does. People want to feel like the, this person has their own interests in mind, and that's kind of measured in likability oftentimes. What's interesting about this race, though, is if it is Hillary Clinton versus Donald Trump, which we expect it will be, this will be a race between the most unpopular figures in history as, uh, as far as the presidential races 
is concerned. So they're dealing with really high, uh, unfavorable ratings. And so Donald Trump, of course, is a big media personality. He's long been uh, on people's televisions in their living rooms. He's been a public figure, not in politics, but in entertainment for a long time. So it's not really surprising to see that he does better than she does in terms of people when they're asked who you'd like to have over for a backyard barbecue, I think was the, <laughs> the question. So on from beer to barbecue, uh, I think he wins both. Okay. I want to ask you, though, Sanders says that even if Clinton doesn't reach the magic number of delegates Tuesday, mm -hmm. it's all about the superdelegates. And he talks about it's a bit concerning because he still has momentum. How is this going to impact them, especially as we go into California? Well, I think it all depends on California, actually. If Hillary Clinton wins California, she's ahead in the uh, polling average about by eight or nine points. Uh, she won California in 2008, the primary there. If she wins, she will able to, uh, you know, have that momentum on her side and be able to put this race behind her. Uh, if Sanders wins, though, it will give him a reason to keep on going uh, past that primary and potentially on to the convention. So she has a big interest in winning California to win on a, uh, to end this primary on a high note. Um, but if if not, um, she is still ahead in the pledge delegate count. Um, flipping super delegates then would be Bernie Sanders strategy, which is kind of counterintuitive to how he started. Remember, he's been framing this race as, you know, super delegates. Uh, if they decide this this contest, it's kind of a rigged system and that sort of thing. So there's a little bit of conflict there. But again, she's ahead in pledge delegate. She's ahead in votes. Okay, Caitlin Huey Burns, thank you for that wrap up. Thank you. And as we mentioned earlier, President Obama is expected to weigh in on Donald Trump and the 2016 race. That will happen during a speech in Elkhart, Indiana this afternoon. CBSN will, of course, cover it beginning at 3 p.m. Eastern, so stick with us.